Hey everyone, welcome back to another graphics card fault diagnosis and repair video. What I have right here is a rather rare green PCB GeForce GTX 580. Um, came across this one, unfortunately, according to the seller. Uh, it's artifacting, I haven't tested it yet, um, but I will very soon after, of course, I have done the good old short testing on the GPU's main power input rails. PCIe slot 12 volts is fine. 8 pin 12 volts is fine. So is 6 pin 12 volts. And the last thing to check really quickly is 3.3 volts. Right there. Now technically it's safe to plug this thing in and test it really quickly. But I also always like to quickly test the voltage rails the card itself creates. Memory is fine. Core is fine. And I think 5 volts and PEX are on the front. Could this be PEX? I'll take a quick look at it. Actually, this down here might be the PEX rail, so let me check that really quickly. 377 could be PEX. I don't know what the resistance on PEX is supposed to be on GF110s, but it's definitely not shorted, so that's good. Let me test it really quickly, and I'll be right back with you. Memory bank F0 is the one that's defective. This thing also has Hynix memory on it, um, which is kind of a problem because I do have donor boards here. Uh, that I could use. It's just that most of them have Samsung EDI on it. Um, so I'd have to go through my box of donor parts, donor GPUs, to hopefully find one that has Hynix on it. Anyways, let's take this thing apart and um, see what exact memory chips are on there. There it goes. Wow. The uh, thermal pads completely disintegrated. <laughs> God damn it. Let's get this out of the way. With the graphics card now cleaned up, I was able to read the model number on these memory modules. And uh, unfortunately, as you can see, it is Hynix AFR. Uh, the reason I say unfortunately is because the only donor board that is at least somewhat functional, as far as I remember, is this one right here, which if I can focus it, as you can see, this thing's got BFR on it, so can't use this as a donor board. So um, unfortunately, what I'll have to do here is uh, the improper fix, which is to reflow this thing and hope that it comes back to life for at least the foreseeable future or for long enough for me to give this thing a proper test. Now, even though reflowing that memory module is not the proper way to fix this, I can at least reflow the memory module somewhat properly because I got my hands onto one of these right here. This is a hot plate. This thing, I believe, goes all the way up to like 350 degrees Celsius, so technically you could even cook on here. Um, but what's nice about these is that I can just put the PCB down right here and get the PCB nice and hot so that I don't have to um, you, know, you know, point hot air at this memory module um, for too long uh, and risk frying it or like damaging it further um, or frying um, memory modules around it. So let me get this plugged in and then give this thing a reflow. Okay, and this thing right here has now been properly reflowed. Sometimes when you see people on the interwebs make videos about, uh, you know, reflowing graphics chips and whatnot, they 
tend to just point a heat gun at you know um, a memory chip or the GPU for like five minutes. Thing is, uh, you know, heat guns are nowhere near powerful enough to reflow, uh, you know, a GPU like this one or even li like a memory module um, without additional help. So if you are going to, you know, do this fix uh, like I did here, you know, at least get your hands onto one of them PCB heaters so that you can get the board up to temperature so that you don't have to hot air the area for as long as you would if you were not using um, one of them preheaters. I guess the only thing that's left to do right now is to, well one, give this thing a bit of a clean and two, wait for it to cool down all the way, which it hasn't. You can see the flux just wiped off, which means it's still quite warm. The third thing, obviously test it. See if this has at least somewhat brought this thing back to life. Okay, I'm just gonna give this thing a quick test. Got my socket 775 test system down here. And as you can see, it's actually no longer spitting out errors. So uh, it is technically you know, functional again, but uh, it's not fixed. Now the, the memory bank that was spitting out errors is still on the board. So this is not fixed, even though it does say that it passed the test. But I guess with that said, if you guys enjoyed this quick video about, again, in air quotes, fixing this rare green PCB GTX 580, consider leaving a like on the video as well as subscribing to the channel. Any support in any way, shape or form is genuinely appreciated and does go a long way in keeping new content coming. And lastly, I wish you all an absolutely amazing day and hope to see you guys again in the very next video. Have a good one.